And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. It's a mix of food, travel, and history. Netflix's High on the Hog explores the black history of food in America. One of those episodes stops in Southeast Texas with a lesson on barbecue history at Gatlin's Barbecue. So we caught up with Greg Gatlin about the experience. And Gary Gatlin from Gatlin's Barbecue is joining us here on The Factor Uncensored. So when you found yourself in the crosshairs of this Netflix special. What did you think that they were picking you and they wanted to talk about you and do a food tour with you of the South? So uh, when they came to us and, you know, gave us the, the pitch about kind of what they were doing, uh, they told, you know, they told us kind of exactly what it was, but what was interesting was seeing all the, all the other components, you know, you know, them telling us, you know, telling us what our story was and be, being able to communi communicate that was, uh, it was an honor to, to be able to do it, and we were really excited about it. But seeing the, uh, the entire uh, series put together uh, really, really put a different spin on it for us. Absolutely mind-blowing. Just gives you in-depth history when you're talking about the African-American yes. culture and African-American food. How, when, when you had a chance to view it, how eye-opening was it for you? Did you learn some things from the Netflix series High on the Hall? Absolutely, you know some of these, all the all the history uh, behind, you know our food. You know you you you've heard different things about it, and you you know that it's there, but the way that they compiled it and kind of brought it, you know, from actually slavery coming over the Atlantic, and then how it c progressed, you know, from the East Coast spreading all the way over to Texas, and you know I'm sure there's some other stuff that went out out west, but. Uh, you know that that's the fascinating part because it was put together so well, and that uh, it really it really built the story from the time uh, you know you looked at how food influenced both our African ancestors and then coming over in, into the Americas. So uh, you know it's it's one it, it's it's life changing from the standpoint of hey we have to be really prideful of what we've done. Uh, we've done we've done some really really good things, but we don't really highlight them. Uh, the way that they should be, and so this was this was an awesome, awesome moment for Black folks, and you know, as a whole. And uh, I'm glad I'm glad that we glad that we were we were part of it. And Gary, you hear a lot of people uh, over the, uh, the the time of history say, you know, African Americans have taken nothing and turned it into something, and yes. that includes our food as well. You have been. Um, had several articles written on you here in the Houston area, and you have uh, garnered quite the reputation as a pit master. So what is that like to be so well respected in Texas, number one, for your barbecue? No easy task. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, it, it, it's funny because I never, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't necessarily set out to be that. It was, we've always just had a, you know, my, my father instilled this in us just to work hard. Hey, work hard at what you do, have pride in what you do. And then, you know, everything else will kind of come with it. Uh, you know, ever since we were kids, you know, whether it was sports that we were playing, whether it was, you know, checkers, whether, whether it was schoolwork, you know, whatever it was, we competed and we did it, you know, to the best of our ability. And so I think that and just being humble at the end of the, end of the day uh, carries you, you know, a long, long way. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's not necessarily, you know, so much of just, just just the food sometimes just being a nice person yeah just be yeah. just yeah just just be a good person and you know a, a lot of things really just fall fall in your lap now you know you put in your time and and, and you make the craft what it is but uh you know I've, I've always just i've been a big proponent of just hey man be a be a be a good person be upfront, uh be honest and true to yourself and things will happen now, we all know any damn body can go in their backyard with their barbecue <laughs> pit and, and, and say they're the best barbecue cook in the world. But what does it take technically to call yourself a pit master? Well, I think it's so it's consistency. Uh, you've got, especially when you get into the, into the business side of it, you've got to be consistent day in and day out, month after month, year after year, because people are coming in looking for that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've we've had our days where we missed the mark and you know and then when you miss that mark you got to be able to say hey i really apologize i missed the mark on it with that particular cut let me try let me try your different cut and you know we go from there 
So, I mean, you, you have to have some humility in barbecue as well because, you know, each, each one of those pieces of meat is a different size. It's a different cut. Uh, it's got different fat content. So you've got to be able to, you know, take each, each one for what they are and uh, really massage and, and, and do your magic on those. And, of course, remember, High on the Hog has four episodes and is streaming now. Let us know what you think after you watch it. Up 